as a Christian, this is what God, God wrecked me with this, and um, as a Christian, we operate out of callings, not careers. Mm. And this is what so God spoke good. to me. A career is something you pursue. You want to become a doctor, a lawyer, whatever. You just got to grind, put in the work, put in the study, do the things. You pursue the heck out of it. You got to network. You got to do your thing. You got to do your thing. You got to do your thing. I'm going to New York because I'm going I'm, to I'm be a lawyer. You know, this, we just met somebody, bought some furniture from him. And I, I just felt this, you know, grind spirit of pursuit come oozing from her. Like I'm headed to New York, you know? And so a calling is something you're called to and eventually sent into. A calling is something, we use these Christian words that I, I honestly have never even looked up the definition of calling, but we use this in the Christian circles a lot. What's your calling? You know, calling, calling, calling. And this is how God was breaking it down to me. A calling is what you were created for. Mm -hmm. God has a specific calling over every single person on the planet. And I can almost promise you everyone's calling is different. Mm -hmm. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. But Solomon, the wisest person on the planet, said, there's nothing new under the sun. So which one is it? Yeah, that new thing a, is you. The, oh, that's good. <laughs> God's expression of a new thing is the thing that he created to walk this earth. And he's like, boom, born at 7.57 a.m. That's the new thing. Born 6 a.m. That's the new thing. Every person he has created on this planet is the new thing. And every person he's created on this planet has a specific calling in which he's created that person to do. How do I know this? One, it's what God was showing me. Two, like all of creation except humanity operates within their calling. The sun doesn't wake up and say, I wanna be the moon today. We'd all die. <laughs> the moon so doesn't wake up and say, I'm gonna be the sun today. You know what I mean? Yes, and so this the stars, is so good. I'm so, I'm, I'm, a giraffe doesn't wake up and say, I wanna be a cheetah today. Like you're gonna fumble over your whole life trying to run fast. Your legs are huge. Like you're not created to be a cheetah, bro. You're a giraffe. Operate in your calling. The ecosystem needs you to be a giraffe because you eat the dead stuff off of the high trees or whatever it is. I forgot what they were, what I was reading about giraffes. But like the lion, the you know the the moose is not trying to be a monkey. Try to climb a tree, moose. You're not gonna be able to do that. And so. A lot of time, what we're seeing today is a massive amount of people pursuing things they're not created and called to do. So their life is a mess because they're pursuing all these things. They're a moose trying to be a monkey. They're a giraffe trying to be, and you know, they're the sun trying to be the moon. And it's just, it's causing a wreck in our ecosystem. The reality is, and I know that I know that I know that everybody has a calling, but you have to be first called Jesus called his disciples. You have to go through this process of going through a waiting period. You're not alone. Jesus was with his disciples. It's the best waiting period on the planet. We yeah. don't talk about this because no. there's not many disciples that have done this. Right. But what you realize in these scriptures in the New Testament in the beginning is, yeah, they were called from their families. Yeah, they were called from their friends and their careers and their jobs, but they found themselves at the feet of Jesus, yeah. the savior of the world. And this access still exists. Yes. It's what we've went yes, through. Yes, it does. And so what you begin to realize after being, after going through sh uh, transplant shock, because it's a real thing. When yeah. you're ripped out of your ecosystem as a plant and you're replanted somewhere, there's a shocking, there's a transplanting mm -hmm. shock period that takes place. But once you start to blossom in your new ecosystem at the feet of Jesus, you're like, ooh, mm -hmm. this is heaven. Mm -hmm. And then once you mature and start bearing fruit at his feet, you're then sent into your calling. And you're like, no, 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 <laughs> like, no, no, no. Like, I wanna be here. Yeah. Like, I want this. And he's like, no, no, like, I, like God created you to go through this process, to sit at my feet, for me to teach you kingdom, teach all these things, to eventually be sent into your calling. And so that's how you never pursue or you never fall to what people try and do if you were created to do, if you were called to, then, then go do it. Mm. It's not time yet. Mm. It's not time yet. You gotta be mature enough to know it's not time yet. And when you're going through this process, you will know exactly when he's descending up and sending you out.
ascending up. ascending up and sending you out yeah. you will you will know like you, it will be it will marked. be unequivocal yeah, it will yeah. be it'll, marked it'll be marked yeah that you will know and you know not only does none of creation except for humanity operate outside of what they were intendedly created to do there is not an invention on the planet that's created by human hands that operates outside of what it was created to do a car will not fly it's not an airplane it wasn't created to be an airplane but what happens when a man's creation or a woman's creation starts to go outside of the world in which it was intended which it was created to do they're talking about this now talk about self-driving cars so if we are in a world where there's just self-driving cars right. if that system begins to operate a smidgen outside of exactly how it was created right every car on the planet would crash right if one car decides to just go rogue outside of the intended created purpose so of that good. algorithm this is so good and that's humanity we're rogue right now because we're not operating the way we were intended or created to operate and we're not within our calling. Everything works seamlessly and that's what they're trying to achieve, but they won't. But that's what they're trying to. They're trying to mimic God. Right. And that's why all of creation is yearning for humanity, for the sons and daughters to rise up and take your seats. The enemy has stolen this and we're going to take it back. The enemy has stolen this, perverted it and preached it in the form of you can do anything. That's the message of motivational speaking. You can be, do anything you want. And it's true, halfway. Because what you were created to do, nothing can stop you. Because that's their message. You can be anything, nothing can stop you. So when you, when you step into your calling, nothing could stop Jesus from doing what he was sent here to do. And that's the other thing that he showed me. Jesus, Jesus was sent to the womb of Mary. Sent into his calling. But there was this period of 30 years of just crazy prepping. And then finally a moment of being almost, sent out. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's this is biblical. This is Jesus. This is the model. And so motivational it's speaking will tell so you you can be, do, have, whatever, anything you want. Nothing can stop you. And it's true if you're inside of your calling. Mm. But when you take that message and try to filter it through chasing a career, it creates misery. It creates not enough. It creates never happy. It creates more, more, more. I gotta have more. I gotta attain more. I gotta get more views. I gotta get more money. I gotta get more houses. More, more, more. Because you're, tr you're, you're, you can do anything. And what's crazy is if we would just take our message back and realize that there is a process with this thing, but whatever I was created to do, I'm gonna be sent into, and I don't have to chase it down. I'm going to eventually be sent into it and then I'm just going to steward the assignment and nothing's going to stop me. And I won't listen to the people that's trying to send me early. I won't I, like, like nothing's going to stop me. And so I just think it's important as Christians, like you are not created for a career. This is not a career path. This is not find the best industry to work with them. Mm. This is not like, what do you love? What do you want to be when you grow up? This is, I have a creator and I'm not afraid to say it. Like, oh, you don't have a life. You don't get to choose what you want to do. Like, you don't understand. I'm not afraid to say I was created on purpose for a purpose. And if I go through the process, I will be able to be sent into something where I'm unstoppable. Mm. And it comes with such peace, such rest, such joy. It comes with the fruits of the spirit that a career would never give you. Mm. If you're honest, it just won't. So good. And so, um, you know, that when you walk that trail of being called out and sent into a calling just realize that this will come and you will have people in your camp that god has permitted you to do that are in the worlds of mindsets of careers or mindsets of motivation or go crush it or get strategic and hashtag and do all that like you'll have people in that camp but you have to be willing at times he will tell you to say get, be, get thee behind me satan but at times, I, I don't see that in here. He just said, Jesus replied, now is not the right time for me to go, but you can go anytime and it will make no difference. He's just saying like, I'm good. Like I know what I'm doing. Now it's not the time, I'm gonna move on. And so this, it's important. And I think it's just such a context to all of creation. I, I've always, that verse has always hit me. 
All of creation is just yearning. They're waiting for sons and daughters of Omer, Yahweh, to rise up and take their seats. And it finally clicked of like, man, when we get into the process of living out what we were created for, like the rest of creation, like literally the rest of creation, when we can come into that type of unity, that's when the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord and Savior because it's just a takeover.